It is Friday, November 4th, in the NBA and the back of my four favorite picks of the day. My name's Austin from Calling Our Shot. Let's crush the sports books heading into the weekend. Despite only having two games on yesterday, we got to let ourselves a little mini sweep as we went 2-0. Nikola Jokic over 21 and a half rebounds plus assists. He cashes that pretty easily. Also, I recommended you consider betting on his double, triple, double, and he cashes that too. Now, Franz Wagner was sweaty. He cashes under 22 and a half points plus rebounds. He ends with 22 on the dot. We've been crushing the sports books this season. Let's continue that today with 12 games on today. Now, if you are new, go down below, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button too. Make sure you don't miss out on these daily videos every single morning. And since we are fortunate to have such a large community, I want to remind people about our cos all-star membership we are going to move lines it's going to happen and we've probably moved lines four times this year where you know we've cashed on the hook or whatnot but people that got it at a worse line didn't cash on the hook these lines are super sharp so that's why i like to encourage people to become a cos all-star you get our place early it's also another way to support the channel it's our youtube membership just click the join button on the channel only 2.99 a month plus i'll shout you at the end of the video like i will do today for all the all-stars that happened yesterday now a couple of my final note is that we do have our nfl week nine best bets video you can go check out that it will be linked at the end of the video and our college football week 10 best picks video will be live today at 12 p.m eastern time our parlays and player props nfl video will be live on saturday now let's dive in if i do add a play today which i don't know if it's likely or not you can definitely check out the pinned comment and make sure you follow on the following us at Colin or shot on twitter tiktok instagram you name it go follow us the best bet segment I had yesterday off today it does it making its return trying to go to 15 and 2 we're going with the guy you might have heard of jason tatum over 26 and a half points minus 110 on DraftKings. Now Tatum and the Celtics back at home today. They're taking on the Bulls and this is an ESPN primetime game. And I expect the stars to come out and there's hardly a bigger star in this game than a guy like Jason Tatum. Now Tatum under this line in two straight games with 23 points and 26 points obviously going under on the hook in that most recent one. Now the 27 or 23 points came in a season low 27 minutes. It was a blowout versus the Wizards. 26 points. He didn't shoot well. He came out shot eight for 21 and he couldn't buy him. I think it was two for nine from three against the Cavaliers. Tatum today will take on the Bulls. Like I said, he doesn't have the best success rate against the Bulls. I actually struggled against them in his career, but I think he, get, he changes that and changes the tide a little bit today. Now, earlier this season, we saw Tatum and the Bulls or Tatum and Celtics take on the Bulls. Tatum scored 26 points, ended on the hook in that game. And that was a game in which Tatum and the starters got blown out by the Bulls, losing by, I believe, 18 points. And Tatum didn't play the final five minutes. Now, I can't guarantee this game isn't a blowout in either direction, but I think it's going to be at least closer. I think Tatum at least sees more than, I think, the two minutes he saw in the fourth quarter. And I don't even think he scored in those two minutes. So he had 26 points entering the third or fourth quarter. And at home, Tatum has played pretty well, shot the ball pretty well. And I like that coming off a bad shooting game. He scored 35, 32, and 23 points at home. Again, that 23 points was a blowout game. So I don't really like to factor in blocks, because that, but that is a way you can lose a lot of these overs and player props. And the Celtics offense, though, doesn't really have a lot of options. They rely heavily on Tatum and Jalen Brown. And ultimately, the guys like Derek White, you know, Marcus Smart, Al Horford, even Malcolm Brogdon off the bench, they don't shoot a, shot, a ton of shots. And if Jalen is missing on the other side, Tatum's going to be forced to be ultra aggressive. And they're going to play a really short rotation. They only really have seven, eight guys that they normally play. And Tatum's also a guy that's going to get to the free throw line a good amount. And he shoots free throws pretty well. He's had six plus free throw attempts in five of six games. Sometimes he gets up to that seven, eight, nine free throw attempts. I think he could get that today. And I also project Tatum to score, shoot the ball 18 plus times. He's just going to have to. This is a Celtics team that relies on him to score the basketball. And Tatum has scored 27 or more points, hitting the over in 16 of his last 25 home games with at least 18 field goal attempts. Certainly think he's capable of doing that, especially after shooting poorly last game where he went eight for 21, two for nine from three. Maybe he doesn't settle for threes today. Maybe he drives, and I think we'll be able to finish in the paint against Patrick Williams and a guy like Nikola Vucevic. I really do like his over today. Taking his over 26 and a half points, the best bet of the day, one and a half units. Let's go to 15 and two on those best bets. Now let's keep it moving, and I'm gonna to go to my favorite spread pick today. I'm gonna to be taking this, this team. Minnesota Timberwolves, but I'm taking them on the money line, plus 130 on DraftKings. Now, immediately, yeah, you can keep the three points. I don't want them because I don't know how many games end with plus three actually cashing and the money line not cashing. And I ultimately think this is going to be a very sharp play because you're, they're taking on the Milwaukee Bucks, the only remaining unbeaten team in the NBA. And everyone is going to be on the Bucks today. They only see them at minus two and a half, minus three against the Timberwolves. Yeah, sign me up. Yeah, no chance. I'm going against that. And the Timberwolves are four and four, loses their two straight games. And the Bucks, seven and zero. Oh, like I said, they can thank the schedule makers for that one as they played six straight home games, only one road game in which they won 90 to 88 versus the Philadelphia. 76ers and they got to play six straight home games where they played against not great teams like the Rockets played against the Pistons twice and this will ultimately be their first road game since November 20th like I said when they beat the Sixers by two now this 
Timberwolves team has the talent and the size to match up well against the Bucks team. That's obviously, let's talk about Giannis. Giannis is going to be the guy you got to stop. And while I don't think they stop him, they can at least handle him. They got Rudy Gobert in there for rim protection. And look, the Bucks had lost five of their last seven games versus the uh, Utah Jazz, obviously Gobert's team. And Rudy, Rudy Gobert's really just going to be solely in there for rim protection. He doesn't have to go up and guard Giannis like he might have had to do with the Utah Jazz. They're going to put Carl Anthony Towns on him and say, you know what, Carl, go get into foul trouble. Go do your thing. But He's going to be leaving Rudy Gobert in there to camp out there in the paint and just stop Giannis whenever he comes in. I think he's going to be able to do that. The Timberwolves have quietly lost two in a row. And since January 1st of last year, or 2022, the Timberwolves have yet to lose three straight games. And I just think they lost two in a row a handful of times. I just don't think they lose three in a row. I know everyone and their mothers can be on the Bucks. It looks like the easiest pick in the in the world. But I think the Timberwolves have the talent. We need Anthony Edwards, we need Carl Anthony Towns, we need even D'Angelo Russell. All those guys to show up, and I certainly think they can. If they can just limit Giannis to less than 30 points, they should be able to get a win here. They play much better at home, where I think they will, will do a pretty good showing. So give me the Timberwolves, the money line, plus 130. It's still good a value to pass up. I don't think they lose three in a row as they've lost two in a row to San Antonio and Phoenix. They're back at home. Give me the Timberwolves to come out with a win. Move the Bucks. Give them the first loss of the season. Now let's wrap this video up with two more player prompts. Maybe add another one on Twitter. Make sure you go check that out or the pinned comment. Nicholas Claxton, over 24 and a half points, rebounds, and assists. Minus 111 on FanDuel. Now, this will only put one unit on, and Claxton, this might have been the last person you'd expect to be in these videos. We haven't really talked about him at all this season, but Claxton's going to be forced into playing 30, 30 or more minutes today, whether he likes it or not. He's going to have to go out there and play a lot of minutes as the Nets will be down with Kyrie Irving. I'm not going to talk about that. They'll be down Ben Simmons. They also could be down Seth Curry. Look, the Nets team as a whole, with those guys healthy and active, don't have a lot of depth, and now they got even less depth as they're going to need Claxton out there, especially in the front court where they don't have a lot of big guys, and they're going to need big guys out there today. Now, Claxton so far this season played 30 or more minutes in four games. He's had 30, 23, 32, and 22 PRAs going over than under, over than under, and he just went under, so it's only right that he goes over, but in the two games without Ben Simmons, who's obviously out today, 32 and 22 PRAs. Now, the 22 comes up three short of what we need today. That was a game he only attempted four field goal attempts. Now, I can't guarantee Claxton goes out there and attempts, you know, 10 field goal attempts. I can't I can't shoot the ball for him. But at the end of the day, I look at this Wizards team. They don't give up a ton of points in the paint, but that might change today because the Wizards have to come out and guard Kevin Durant. We know the ball is going to be in Durant's hands a lot. And so do the books. They got us over under like 34 and a half points. But at the end of the day, you're going to see Claxton set a ton of screens. It's not just going to be for a guy like Kevin Durant. It's going to be for Patty Mills. It's going to be for Joe Harris. He's setting those screens. And if the big men are going under those screens, they're going to leave those wide open shooters for three-pointers. And I just don't see that happening. The Wizards also a team that runs guys off the three-point line a ton. And at the end of the day, Chris Ops Porzingis, if he wants to go under those screens, you're just going to be spammed with Kevin Durant mid-ranges. He's going to knock those down. He's one of the best scorers ever in NBA history. And I think we'll see those guys coming up. Claxton should be open in the paint, and they're willingly enough to pass it to Claxton. He also can make free throws if forced to, and I think at the end of the day, Wizards are going to continue to run guys off the three-point line. Claxton's going to be in there. He can clean up offensive rebounds. We know Kristaps Porzingis is not the best rebounder in the world, and he's going to be needed out there to guard Kristaps, a seven-foot-three guy. And sure, you could think, well, Kristaps stands out on the perimeter. Well, yeah, Kristaps doesn't shoot a three. He just stands on the perimeter, and when the other guy shoots it on his team, he just starts running back. He does not go for any offensive rebounds, hardly ever. We know that because we took us over in uh, rebounds, and he wasn't. He was just running back on defense instead of going and fighting for an offensive rebound. So we could see Claxton have a pretty good day on the boards. I wouldn't be surprised if we see him put up like a 12 points, 12 rebounds, and two assists kind of game. If I had to predict, predict a stat line, I think that's it. But look, they're going to need him out there to guard Chris Dobbs, who's 7'3". Their next tallest guy is Kevin Durant at 6'10". Well, technically 6'10". Who knows how tall Kevin Durant actually is and then De'Ron Sharp who's not even seeing any minutes at six foot nine plus the Nets obviously fired Steve Nash their new coaching staff gave Claxton 35 minutes a career high in their last game against the Bulls very similar matchup against Vucevic as it is Chris Stapps a guy that stands out on the perimeter shoots a lot of mid-ranges shoots a lot of three-pointers and I think we'll see Chris Stapps do pretty well centers have performed well versus the Wizards this year the ones with 30 or more minutes we saw Miles Turner 39 PRAs we saw Jared Jared Allen of 39, and then we saw Evan Mobley only have 19, but Mobley obviously played with Jared Allen. So I think we're going to see Claxton play a ton of minutes, pile up the rebounds, pile up hopefully some points, some easy opportunities at the rim. I think he's capable. He's getting big minutes today. Go get it done, Mr. Claxton, over 24 and a half PRAs. Now, I'll wrap up this video with a deep sleeper. You thought it could get deeper than Claxton? Yeah, listen up, because we're going with this guy, Luka Doncic. We're taking his over 17 and a half rebounds plus assists, minus 125 on DraftKings. Now, before I dive into why I like this, I play it at 18 and a half. 
And if you needed a specific prop, I think Luka gets both of them. Likely lean is over and rebounds, baby assists. I don't really know. I think it could go either way. But if you want a guy to sprinkle on a triple double like Jokic yesterday, this is your guy at plus 340. Now, Luka's under this line in two straight games with eight and 16 rebounds plus assists. He's obviously been off the scorching pace scoring the basketball. I think he's been what, like the first player to score 30 plus points in seven straight games to start the season since Wilt Chamberlain. And Luka and the Mavericks take on the Raptors today. And I know this Raptors defense hard. I know them too well because we've taken Darius Garland props all season last year. And when he played the Raptors, what do they do? They just triple team and they say, you know what, anyone else but Luka. And I imagine they do that again on this uh, on, in this Friday night game because look, they're going to make someone else shoot the ball and it's not going to be Luka that I think scores 100 points against them. And yeah, that has been the case in Luka's last six games versus the Raptors. He's at 21. 21, 21, 16, 22, and 20 rebounds plus assists, crushing this line in five of six games, finishing two short in one of the other games. Luka leads the Mavericks in both rebounds and assist chances at combining for 30.4 of both of those two things. And look, if Van Vliet returns today, which hopefully he does, Raptors going back to the Pascal Siakam at the five look, meaning, you know, the center for the Mavericks, whether it's JaVale McGee, Dwight Powell, or it's Christian Wood. They're going to have to come out and guard him. And that's going to lead to Luka being the primary rebounder down in the paint. He's not going to have to worry about boxing out a lot of guys. You know the Mavericks like to disguise Luka on defense. They don't really need him playing much defense because he does so much on the other side of the court. And ultimately, I think Luka could easily grab 10 plus rebounds, could easily grab 10 plus assists today if his teammates can knock down shots, which I like their chances to knock down shots given it's at home where they probably shoot a better percentage. So I really do like Luka's over 17 and a half rebounds plus assists. I think he's a good chance for a triple double today. In fact, you're getting plus 340 on DraftKings for that. Feels like a good chance for a sprinkle. I also think the Mavericks do win that game because I don't think I think people will be betting on the Raptors to win after they just won by 43, and then they'll probably lay an egg. So, Luca, go get it done. I have faith in you. Those are my four picks of the day. As always, if you want to become an all-star, click the join button on the channel because we're shouting out some and we're butchering some names as always. Here we go. Marcus, Maria, Rudy, Alex, 3v Many, Forgotten Thoughts, e -Rod. We got Dom, we got P99, 715 Glizzy. We got Sweet Briar Baby Gamble. Uh, hopefully that's Larry416, Corey, Thomas, Zilrak, Shunies, Dominator, Ryan, Ignacio, Saved by Lundquist, 3530, Musa, Juki NS, Sox, Jasper, Young Lick 402, Bryce, JNSL, Christian, Kevin, Don, Ke Keshav, hopefully, I don't know, R Richard, Donnie, Shane, 24 fan, Jamel, Caleb, I love this one. Thank you, Austin from COS. I love it. Eric, Adrian, Juiced. We got Tristan, we got Icy, if that's the real Icy, the real goat. Have, Lag, we got Kiernan, Ra, Ro, Rao, I don't know. John, Youngs, Youngston, I don't know, Young, I don't know. John, Shrimp Bayless, it's a Shrimp Bayless one, that's funny. Lathan, hopefully I pronounced that right. Willie, Justin, Vandalovsky, Tanner, and Duncan. You guys, the real MVPs, technically the All-Stars, but I can't do without you guys. All the love and support. It's Friday. Let's have a great day. If we add a play, you'll know down below in the pinned comment and on our Twitter at Colin our shot. Let's have a great day. Let's go do it. Let's go and bring out the brooms today. I love you guys. Let's have a great day. I'll see you guys back again tomorrow. Peace out.